I've got a big diorama that I'm starting and I have a lot of work to do. So let's go ahead, not waste any time and get over to that table. So first I want to show you what this model actually looks like. I got this from a Patreon I follow called Doses 3D and I will go ahead and put a link to where you can get this model in the description below. Now I have a lot of work to do to this. This is a giant diorama. This took me a full liter of resin to 3D print. Because it's so big, I have just about every issue you can run into when cleaning up your resin 3D prints. So let's go ahead and get started. And I also want to say thank you to my newest Patreon this month. And if you're interested in getting full access to my Discord server and seeing some of my behind the scenes projects, check out my Patreon and I'll put a link to that in the description below. So I've got all the pieces here laid out on my workbench and I also have some of this shelf liner that I use when I'm sanding and creating a mess to just kind of keep it all contained. So that is a really good little tip that you can use shelf liner to be able to contain messes. So this diorama is 15 pieces. So it's a lot of things to sand and get ready for paint. Now I have three pieces over here to the side of basically the wall and the street and these are massive pieces. So what I'm going to do is just going to work on one piece at a time. Some of these things I'm going to be gluing, some of these things I am not going to be gluing because I want them separate so I can paint them easier. For example, this right here. If I paint this right now, or if I glue this together right now, it is going to be really hard to get into these cracks. So I'm going to keep the bottom half separate so I can get in here and paint this and get all of those shading techniques that I'm wanting to get in there. So when it comes to gluing for me, I always look at what the colors are and how the paint is going to clash with each other. So I'll look at the tail and realizing that maybe I want to get the same kind of gradation on this tail and match it up perfectly with the paint job. I might actually glue this thing together and have all of the tail like this glued together. And I'm also not going to be gluing on the hands here as well because with this, how it was actually designed, this is the entire hand. So if I put this in, that's going to be hard to get into some of those cracks right there. So I'm going to avoid that. And so that's kind of the biggest thing when you're starting this process. When you're cleaning up everything, what should be glued together and what shouldn't be glued together. Typically, if it's the same color, I am going to glue it together easily because I know that I can get a nice transition here if I paint this whole thing. Because if I don't, I could possibly get a mismatch. So I, you know, paint this and then I paint this. When I put it together, you're going to see that line. And I also want to fill in these cracks. So I'm definitely going to be at least putting this thing together. So first let's talk about the tools. So when it comes to cleaning up your resin prints for paint, most of the time you're going to be using sandpaper or sanding in some form or fashion. So I have four things that I use for sanding. So I have your basic sandpaper. I have sanding sponges at different grits, sanding twigs at different grits, and these things are fantastic to get into smaller areas that you can't get with sandpaper. Then I have my newest tool that I have fallen in love with, and this is called the G tool. And it's essentially like an electric toothbrush with a spin top here that you put on different pads of sandpaper. And this is really good to just kind of get some of those areas. It's not good for large areas. Large areas, I'm still using my sanding sponges and the regular sandpaper. But for those little tiny areas that are hard for you to kind of get in there, it's a good tool to use. Now I'll put a link to all of these things in the description for you. So the last thing is the most important thing, a respirator. You absolutely should be wearing a respirator when you are sanding resin 3D prints. This is toxic stuff, and when you bring it into the air, you're breathing it into your lungs, and you should not be doing that. It can cause severe health problems long term. So if you don't want any respiratory issues in the future, I strongly recommend you wearing this because this hobby is not worth your health. So please, please, please use a respirator when sanding your resin 3D prints. So the first thing I have is Spider-Man. He comes in four pieces. So I've got the legs, the top, torso, and then the hands. So when you're putting these things together, you should always look and see how your fit is. And is there any wobble or any slack 
Some of the common issues when you're putting together your pieces is the fit. Some 3D artists will actually make the tolerances so tight that maybe on your printer you can't get that precision and it won't fit. And also maybe you didn't clean this properly because right here in the holes and in the cracks, resin likes to cr collect. And if you didn't wash this out properly, it will harden when you cure and then it won't fit together. So you have to take an X-Acto knife or some type of tool and scrape and scratch out those corners to be able to get this to fit right. Another thing you can do is sand down the peg. I've actually had prints where I've almost sanded the peg off completely because the face fits perfectly, but I can't get it to fit in the hole. But this actually fits really well. The artist did a great job at it, but I do have some slack and I do feel like the reason being is not this because this is perfectly smooth. It's right here. You can see all these divots and also there's some raised areas. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is sand this down to get it nice and smooth and along the edges here because right where the supports were, I can see a little bit of raised areas. And if you run your finger across it, you can feel that. So first thing, I'm gonna clean this edge and get it fitting really, really nicely. What I'm gonna be using for that is just sandpaper. And what I typically do is I will get a small piece like that and I will fold it in half. I always fold them in half because I've always got this nice edge that I can get in to some of those cracks right here to really break down some of that built up resin that might have formed. And also it helps me just grip it a little better. So we're gonna go ahead and do that and I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. All right, so now I've got this fitting together really nicely. And what I had to do was sand this down. And also I sanded a little bit of the edges and the corners of the actual peg because I realized there is some buildup here. I could have scratched it out of the hole here, but sometimes it's easier just to sand the peg itself. So this is good now, the fit is good. Now I'm going to focus on the actual piece itself. One of the biggest things I look at and consider every single time I'm sanding a piece is, is it worth me sanding this and getting it perfectly smooth and losing some of the detail? Or is it okay and if I just paint it, maybe I can cover it up with some of the paint? Now looking at this, there are a little bit of layer lines right here, not much, and this is going to be okay for me to paint. But if it was on the chest where some of these lines are for the webbing of his costume, I would not do it in any way. But I'm gonna go ahead and just sand the back here just a little bit. And what I'm going to do to do that is use my sanding sponges because I can just easily get in here and it will get a lot of these little tiny layer lines. One other really important thing, when you're sanding your resin 3D prints, you do not want to use like an 80 grit or 120 grit sandpaper because it will eat away so much of your resin and cause all of these lines because of it scratching it. And then you're going to have to sand even lower. The only time I use this stuff is for the surfaces that you do not see anything because it eats away the resin really easily. So big important thing right there. I always stay above 220 and that is where I actually do a lot of my sanding. I'll start at a 220 sandpaper and then keep moving myself up to a higher grit to be able to get a very smooth surface. So I'm gonna go ahead and sand this now. All right, so now I have all of the fits perfectly. I've got this sanded and night looking nice back here. The pegs are good. And I've also sanded a bit of the hands and the edges. Now I do have a few little marks right here that I need to sand down on the back of his fingers. And all I'm going to be using is these sanding twigs. So if you're unfamiliar with what a sanding twig is, it is basically a small strip 
of sandpaper on both sides. You can think of it almost like a little nail file, but it is great to be able to hold on to and get in certain little areas like this and just kind of going back and forth. And also you can just kind of file something and sand things down. On the back of the hands here, I do have little tiny marks from the supports and they are raised marks so I can just sand them down and make them look nice without losing a lot of the detail of the webbing around the fingers. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now and then the hands and the top torso will be done then I move on to the lower torso. All right, so now for the lower torso. So I do have some issues with my print. I have been testing my retraction speeds and my first initial layers and been getting a little bit of issues, but I know it's just a settings thing. But that can be solved with just a little bit of light sanding. The other issue is, if you see here, see all of these wonderful little pop marks? I've got a ton of little pop marks. Now, there are two things to consider when you're doing pop marks. You first need to look to see how the model is. Do I need to even fill them in? And this is actually on the tail, and he is like that up against the wall. So let me get the wall. So this is actually the full thing right here. Now. The one thing to consider is, will I ever see that, and do I need to actually fill that in? And for my all intents purposes, for this specific piece, no. I do not need to fill this in, because I'm never going to see underneath here. I'm never going to actually see underneath here because of how the actual model is. There's, there's no way, because there's also going to be this floor that's way underneath it. So I am not going to fill in any of these little divot and pop marks right now. There are other parts of the model that I am going to fill in, but for this one, I am not. And if you feel like that you need to fill in every single thing and make your model 100% perfect because you'll know, that's perfectly fine. But for me, when I'm doing these kind of things, I always look to see, do I need to spend all of that extra time? And for this, it's mostly going to be viewed from probably about this angle and you're never going to see it underneath here. So I'm going to go ahead and just sand this down really nice and get this nice and smooth and then I will be done with this. So Spider-Man is now officially done. I have him all sanded. Now we're moving on to the big piece. Now I'm going to move on to the hands and the feet. I'm going to be using the exact same process that I did for Spider-Man, so I'm just going to zip through this stuff and get these all done. Now I've got the claws all nice and sharp, and then the feet are all done. Now I'm ready to move on to the next part. All right, so the next part I'm going to be dealing with is the legs, and you can see all of these divots, but I don't know if, yeah, you can see the divots right here on the top of the leg, because I actually had to print him like this. So this is the build plate, and it printed like that, to be able to get all of these you know, sharp edges, because this is all perfect. But the, top of the arm, but the top of the leg here is not perfect because of all the supports I had to do. And this is a hefty piece, so it had to be medium and heavy supports. When I took it off, I got a bunch of little divots. And this is one thing you can do. So here's one of the tricks that I have, haven't really shared on my YouTube channel before. And this is how I can get rid of these holes. Now, there is one way I can do it, and I just take plastic putty and fill in the holes. But the other way that I do it is I will actually take resin and fill in the holes with exactly what it is. So I've got just, I mean, you can see it's a tiny amount of resin because it's not going to take a whole lot. So I've also got a pointed stick here with a cotton on the end of it. And you don't have to use this. You can just use a regular Q-tip. I could actually use the other end if I wanted to. And I'm just going to get some on there, a drop of it, and then I'm basically just going to add drops of resin on here. And I can even just smear it around and get it nice 
and smooth as possible because the better this looks, the less work it's going to take on my part. So just putting a little bit on here and filling in all of these little holes. So you can see how some of it, I actually make it look like it's part of the jeans, so I'm building it up. When I actually cure this, I won't have to do very much sanding. Alright, so there we go. I'm just going to put this aside. And I'm going to move this away, way far away from what I'm about to do. Now I have a UV torch, and you can see here that all I'm going to do is hit this with my UV torch. I'm going to keep doing this for a while until I have cured the resin. The other thing you can do is if you have a curing station, you can actually just throw it back in your curing station too. So I went ahead and set that in my curing station and I'm going to go ahead and move forward with the other pieces. So I've got some more divots right here and I'm just going to go ahead and fill in all these little divots right here. And the other thing is, is if you get too much on there, you can always just take a cotton swab and wipe away the areas that it might have fallen into. So like I've got a little bit of an area right here that's just got a little too much on it. So just kind of wipe that away. And that's it. So now this looks pretty good. I don't see any other divots. Maybe there's one extra right here. And there we go so now I am ready to cure this one as well oh there's some more over here and there we go so now I am going to cure this one as well Alright, so I also went ahead just to be safe and threw this in my curing station and you can see here now I have filled in all of these divots that are on the top of these pants. Now it's just going to take a little bit of a light sanding and it is going to start looking really good. But before I do that, I'm going to move on to the tail where I still have some more of these little divots right here that I want to take care of. So bring this back over here and take care of some of these. And this is also a really great way to get rid of any kind of layer lines. Maybe you had some really harsh layer, layer lines that you want to get rid of. You can always just add a little bit of resin and you can do this with a small brush as well. Like that's the cool thing about this is you got to think, unlike FDM, when it's done, it's done. But with resin, you can always add to and just put a little resin on it and cure it again. Okay, so now this is ready to get cured as well. And the last part I want to add some resin to is the bottom of this lab coat has a bunch of pop marks so I'm gonna go ahead and fill in all of these now I don't have to fill in right here because this is where the tail is going so if you can see here all of that gets completely covered so there's no reason for me to do that so I've got to just take care of here and right here And I'm just going to just give a skim coat of this entire thing and it will automatically fill in all of those holes. Okay, so now I'm going to sand the top portion of this. And I'm going to be using my G tool and I've got a 600 grit 
sanding disc on here to just lightly go over it and smooth out some of these little bumps that the resin left behind. Okay, and one thing I like to do is I like to get a wet paper towel, just get it a little damp, and then I will wipe off all of the dust and get it nice and clean just so I can look at what it looks like. So I can see there that everything actually looks really great right there now. No more divots and we are good to go. So I'm gonna smooth out a little bit of this groin area. I've got some layer line issues right there and sand that down and then this section of the lizard will be done. All right, so now I have all of this filled in and I'm going to just go ahead and sand it and get it nice and smooth. Okay, so now I'm ready for the tail, and what I have to do here is there's not a lot of sanding on this seam right now, and the one thing I'm going to have to do is assemble this tail, so I'm going to glue it, and then I'm going to work on this seam after it's glued. So I'm just going to go ahead and get my super glue, which I'm using just Gorilla Glue Super Glue Gel. And I'm going to go ahead, add it all here, and get started. And the important thing is, is I'm making sure I'm aligning these scales. Okay, so now I've got that glued together, and the next part is I'm going to glue this part to the bottom of the torso, because the really important part here is this, where this connects, because if you see here, you want to look how things are connected. You're going to be able to see this part of the tail underneath. The part on the top, you're not going to see anything but you're going to see this bottom part. And this bottom part connects directly to this and you're going to be able to see that seam. So the important thing here is I need to glue that together and fix that seam now before I get paint on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue this and then this all will be one piece so I can paint the entire tail all at once. All right, given the size of this and the amount that I've actually put on here, I am going to go ahead and give this a full 24 hours to dry because I do not wanna be pushing on this and it pops off and me working on it right now might actually break it. So I'm gonna go ahead, set this aside and not touch it until tomorrow. Now we're back a day later and I have the tail and it's actually really, really sturdy. So now what I'm going to do is fill in these cracks. So I've got a gap here that wraps all the way around to right here. Now the lab coat covers right here, so I'm not too concerned, but I am concerned right here specifically. Now an important thing to note, when you're cleaning up your prints, don't waste your time on areas that are never being seen because if you look, you're never going to see this because it's all the way up underneath there. Now I will see here, but I don't need to clean this up and make this look perfect because you're never going to see it. So there's no reason to waste the time. Now when it comes to right here, this whole seam, I'm going to see every inch of this. So I need to get this looking as nice as I physically can. So what I'm going to be using for this is this plastic putty. Now, if you've seen any of my other videos, how I typically use this is I will like squirt it all around the actual model, then put my super glue down and then push it and then it'll squeeze out the edges. Now that is really good when it comes to like connection points like this. 
but not for this model. I'm just talking about for like an arm into a shoulder or something like that when you want a perfect seam. So the artist that actually designed this did an amazing job to conceal all of the seams that he could. So you don't even see the arm here because it's actually concealed back here. So there is going to be no need for any kind of plastic putty on this and the, the feet and the other arm for sure. So for this method, I'm going to be using this in a little bit of a different way. So I'm actually going to be applying this with a brush. Now that's why I have my paint tray out here. And this is what I'm gonna do. I am just going to squirt some of it out. Then I'm also going to take the other cup over here and just add a little bit of water. Now the first thing I'm gonna do is just grab it here. And the key is do not use a brush that is good. You kinda wanna use an old crappier brush for this. And I'm going to paint the crack. And I'm really trying to fill in this seam. Now, what I'm going to do is get a little bit of my water on here. And just brush it. And all I'm doing is trying to fade it out a little bit. And what this is going to do is this is going to really leave some of my details I have here. So I'm not losing a ton of my details because it's going to be a pain in the butt to sand this. So I just want to get it in those cracks. So if you can see how it's going along that crack right there, right there, if you see it. And now I'm going to do the exact same thing all along here. So I'm going to try to just kind of push it in there and fill this crack. And there's nothing stopping you from putting your finger in it like that too to fill it in some of those bigger areas that you feel like you can really get it in there. There's nothing wrong with that. And just like any other painting project, it is going to look terrible while you're doing this. And that's okay. You can always sand this stuff too. Okay, now I'm going to get a little water and start to fade some of this out. So now I have that cracked completely covered and I am going to just kind of take a paper towel and sop up some of that water and it's also going to remove some of the actual plastic putty. And that is perfectly fine. I'm just going to get really close to it and try to get rid of some of that because we don't want a giant mess, but at the end of the day, it's not the end of the world if this just dries on there like that, because it is conforming to the cracks. We will lose a little bit of detail depending on how much you leave there, but, but I just wanna try to clean up as much of it as I can to kind of leave that detail. Now, you can still see that crack, and you're going to for right now because this is going to take multiple times. So I might have to do this again one more time. So after this is dried, I can actually sand this down a little bit and see what this is gonna look like. Then we can apply it again to our spot right here because it's already drying and looking real good. It's filling in some of those cracks already and we're gonna just let this dry. Now I typically let this dry for a few hours before coming back to it because I want to make sure it's good and dry because we did thin this out and there's not a lot there so it will dry a little quicker. I don't ever put this in front of like a heater or anything like that. I will put it in front of a fan just because I've noticed when you put this stuff down and you dry it too fast it will crack and just cause you to use more of this so so i'm going to just let this stuff naturally dry and it does contract just a little bit when it dries so we're definitely going to be using this again so we'll come back to this when it's all dry and go from there then the other thing is you can get some water in a dish and clean your brush really well that way that plastic putty doesn't dry in there and ruin it. But like I said, you still just don't want to be using a really good brush for this stuff because it can stay behind and it just, it will destroy your brush eventually. 
While the lizard tail is drying, I'm going to move on to this big, gigantic base. Now, what I'm wanting to do is just clean this up. For the most part, this base turned out beautiful. So this base is actually three parts. It's the bottom, the corner, and the top. So I'm gonna set these aside. Now when it comes to the base itself, it's actually a beautiful print. There wasn't a lot of issues and I don't really have anything to do with it besides the edge. I have a lot of pop marks and I'm just going to sand those down. I'm not going to use any filler or anything. I'm just going to use some sandpaper and sand it down real nice. So I now have the base completely sanded. It didn't take a whole lot but I was just really looking at connection points and things like that. Some of the bricks needed cleaned up, but for the most part, it was pretty simple and it was just a beautiful print. So this is all good to go. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and sand this down and with my sanding sponge and to see how the crack looks. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and do a second coat of the plastic putty. So I'm going to let this dry and then we'll come back to it and sand it down again and see if this is the last coat. So now that all of my pieces are pretty much ready to go except for the tail, I'm going to go ahead and do the last thing which I take a wet paper towel and I wipe everything down really good to get all of that dust off and just to clean any residue that might be on it. And if I notice any like extra sticky things on here, like maybe it's some resin that's maybe not fully cured or something like that, I'll also scrub it with some alcohol if I notice that. But all of these are all nice and clean. They're just dusty. So I'm gonna go through and wipe down everything and then set these aside somewhere else so none of this dusty stuff gets back on my models. All right, so I've resanded this and now I have this seam completely filled and it is pretty good. Now, all I've got to do is wipe this down with a wet paper towel again, and the same thing as I do with all the other pieces. I'm just wiping it, cleaning off all of the dust, and the only thing is I am going to be careful on this edge because the water can reactivate this plastic putty. So I'm going to lightly just kind of go over it, and that is it. I'm not going to get it like really super wet or really try to like wipe hard. I'm just going across it gently. And the same thing for this. Just going over it very softly. So that was my entire process of how I get my resin 3D prints ready for primer. So the next thing I've got for this guy is he is going to get primed and I'll be doing another video on how I prime my models when they're big projects like this. Thanks a lot and I'll see you guys in the next video.